Hello, today I'm here with a new video and today I'm here with the tag video and this tag is created by Anya, one of my friends here on YouTube and this is the low buy slash no buy tag and I am on low buy as you may know so I thought this tag was perfect for me and I think that Anya, she is so created with coming up with tag videos and I will of course leave her channel up here down in the description also her video and all the questions and this is like a not like a typical tag is that correct to say like that but it's like I'm going to talk pretty much and this is yeah I think we just get started because I think this can be a long video it depends on how much I'm going to say of course but I maybe it's long we have to see Maybe I don't ramble at all, maybe I ramble super much, I don't know. So I think we just get started and it is eight questions. So yes, let's get started. Question number one, how long have you been on your low buy slash no buy? And all these questions are low buy slash no buy, but I am going to take only low buy because I am on a low buy and not a no buy. And I have been on my low buy since the 1st of January 2019. So I was like this typical person that, oh, new year, new beginning. But I felt it was like a good thing. Sometimes in my life I need like this super strict things. I like to start things on Monday. I like to start things the first in the month. I, it's just who I am as a person and I started my no buy. My no buy, no, my low buy the first of January this year. I hate to say January. January. January on Swedish. Not January. It's hard, okay? Question number two. What motivates you to try a low buy? And it is two things. One is that I was so overwhelmed with my makeup collection. Last year in like November and December I started to feel like stressed out. Like, I didn't have time to test everything. I wanted to buy, like, everything that came out. But I didn't have the time to test it. I was stressed out to see all the palettes I haven't tested out. I was stressing about I couldn't do the videos I want to do. And it was, like, the biggest motivation for me. Like, I, I, makeup has to be fun if I want to do it. And... At that point it didn't feel fun at all. I was just so stressed out. And it wasn't good. Um, makeup for me is like my outlet for being creative. And it's my little safe space. It's my little fun space. So it wasn't good when it stressed me out. Because then like it loses all its what it is for me. This should be fun and not stressful. And also another thing that motivates me is... I have talked about this so much it feels like. Me and my boyfriend we want to buy a house and then we have to have money. So I wanted to save as much money as I could. So that motivates me as well. So yeah. These two things. I want... I didn't want to be stressed out by my makeup collection and I want to buy a house. I don't think we're going to buy a house this year because the house market is like crazy. We were so close earlier this year to buy a house but it wasn't... We didn't get it and it still feels like shit and it was like five months ago so yeah. Question number three. Are there any other YouTubers who motivate you or inspired you on your low buy? And yes, it's two people, and I'm going to say the same two people that Anya said, and it's LS and Angelica Nyqvist. And LS, she is on a no-buy year, and I saw her video when she talked about it, and I was like, I need to do something similar. Um, so she is like the first motivator for me, and then Angelica... It is so strange. Angelica, Angelica. I, I never know what to say. I hate this with like my the Swedes I'm looking at because her name is Angelica, not Angelica, but it's hard to switch. 
So Angelica, Angelica, when she was going to go on her low buy and talked about the rules because I have tried to be on a no buy before it didn't go good at all and then Angelica did her video where she could buy three things per month and I was like maybe this is something for me because I can't do maybe I could but I can't like promise myself to have a no buy because it's going to be too much pressure on myself I know that because I've tried before so when she made her video on her low buy I was like this sounds like such a good idea and I think I can do my own version of it and yeah so LS and Angelica and I can leave them down in the description as well okay I, Anya hasn't numbered the questions and I think we are at number four <laughs> it feels like I come off like stupid <laughs> on the internet I'm sorry about it I'm not this stupid, but next questions we can say. Next question we can say. Um, what is a positive aspect that you have experienced in your low buy? And that is, I am no longer stressed about my makeup collection. I am not getting stressed when I watch it. When I sit down and do my makeup, I do not feel any stress at all and I'm so so happy because that was one of the big reasons why I wanted to go on this low buy and also I play with more makeup that I have like older makeup than I did before this because then I was just buying a new one, new palette, new palette, new palette and I was just testing out new palettes it felt like but now I'm going back to like older palettes that I have and maybe do a free looks one palette with a palette that I have had for maybe a year and that is positive for me because I don't know if I'm more creative or not but I get more use of my collection and what I have and that is so positive for me. I am so happy about that. So that is like the biggest positive change for my low buy experience this far. And it has gone soon eight months. So I think... I don't think any more revolutionary things will happen in this last four months of this year. If I'm going to be honest. I think I have done the rough part of it. So yeah. That's the most positive aspect, that I don't feel stressed, I am pleased with my makeup collection and I think it's more fun than I think I have ever thought it have been and that is so so good. What is a ne negative as aspect that you have experienced in your low buy? And one thing that I was so so scared of was that my channel was going to die out and it has not, uh, it has grown so much this eight month and I don't know if there is anything negative because because I have had these free items per month that I can buy I don't feel like I have missed out on anything maybe I have felt that for like one or two days but then like the urge to buy something new has I don't have that urge anymore so I don't feel like I've missed out and I have always like tried to save one item per month so I can buy if anything limited edition or something like that comes that I really really want so I don't think that I have missed out on anything this year and it feels great and I don't feel like I have missed out on doing any videos because I live in Sweden as you know and I am never going to be first with anything because I live in Sweden and it takes so long like Colourpop I can never be first with anything that comes from Colourpop anything new because it takes like two or three weeks to get it here if not even more and the most in brands yeah I can be first with like Blush Tribe or one of the first because I live in Europe and Blush Tribe ships from Europe but other than that I I can't be first with anything because I live in Sweden. Maybe Linda Holberg I've been one of the first. But like nothing more than that and 
So that has not been anything negative. But it feels like that can be a thing that can be negative for some people, but for me, no. Nope. Do you think a low buy slash no buy is beneficial for everyone? Why and why not? And this depending so so much on how your shopping habits are, how your economic situation is, how your life is. It depends. It's no like straight answer to this. It's not like a yes or no question. But I think if you feel overwhelmed with your makeup and feel a little bit stressed, you f think, I think that you would feel better with a low buy or a no buy. And if you don't feel that you have money to do other stuff, maybe a no buy or a low buy should be good. And if you feel like you buy things just to buy them, you maybe don't want them, but you buy them because you want to buy, then I think a no buy or a low buy would be great but it's depending on who you are as a person, how your life is, do you have any goals so I can't like, yes everybody should do a low buy because it doesn't suit everyone and maybe you don't need, maybe you don't buy too much makeup and what is too much makeup? You have to make up your own mind so I think the answer to this it's like it's a no easy answer it's what suits you and your life your lifestyle and your economic and your mental health and everything like that so i can't answer but i think if you feel like a slight slight that you have a little, little problem or that you spend too much money just try it maybe for one or two months I think you can learn something from it. Next question. What is some advice that you have that you have to people starting a low buy or a no buy? And I have to talk about a low buy in my case. And my advice is sleep on it. If it's coming out a new palette that you really, 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 really want, sleep on it. And if you want it as bad the next day, then you maybe should buy it, but if this urge goes away when you are sleeping you don't need it. And also do something else. When you feel this urge of buying something, just do something completely else. Sit down and play with the makeup you already have, take a walk, listen to a podcast, edit a video, film a video, maybe talk about it, how you're feeling. Just do something else, just to distract yourself distract yourself and I think that works with like very many things in your life if you want to maybe stop smoking I have never smoked so I don't know but do something else just distract yourself uh, I don't know if that is like a bad advice but it works for me and just think a little bit and maybe if you really 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 want something see if you have it in your collection already or if you can dupe it or maybe just make a list as well on what is it that you really really want with this product and yeah I have done that with some palettes that I thought like I really want this palette and then I like break it down and look at each shadow and maybe in a palette that has 14 shadows I only want 3 and that is total waste of money um, so yeah just sleep on it think on it and break things down and distract yourself with something else that's my advice I don't know if that's a bad advice or good advice but that is my advice the last question what have you learned from this experience? And I have learned that I don't need everything. I don't need four green palettes in the same color story. I don't need that. And I don't need to be... I don't need to have everything, every new releases. I don't need that because it's only going to stress me out. And it doesn't make it maybe makes me happy for 
15 minutes and then it's like why did I buy it? It has happened before with me that I have bought a palette and I have been so excited and I got the palette home and I looked at it and I maybe used it once and then it's like I am done with this palette and that is so such a waste of money and so I have learned that and also I have learned that it's are we going to get a little deep, a little tea spill or something, I don't know. But I feel like in the YouTube world, sometimes it's like... Oh, are you using an old palette that you have had for two years? You must use new things. Sometimes it feels like that, that you have to use new things. Or else you're a little bit... People that buy new palettes are a little bit better than the people that use their old palettes. I don't get if... I don't know if anybody feels like me, but I feel like that sometimes, that you have to have new things. I have learned that you don't have to do it. You are not a boring person if you're not... Just because you don't buy all the new Anastasia Beverly Hills palette, you are not a boring person. You are not a boring person if you don't buy all the Colourpop palettes, you're not a boring person if you don't buy every new releases from every little indie brand, you are not. You are not boring because you're not hopping on to the makeup revolution little food palettes train, you are not boring. And I have learned that and I have learned that people watch me because I am me and not that I have a fancy new makeup. And that feels so good. Did you hear my arm? And yeah. I feel that that maybe was all for this tag. I am sorry if I just have been rambling and rambling. But I think this was a fun tag. And I think it was a good time for me to do this tag now. And yeah. Don't forget to check out Anya. And if you want to do this tag. Do it. And are you thinking about going on a low buy? Please tell me in the comments and if you want some advice, I maybe can give some advice because I have I've done it for a while now. So yeah, I really hope you liked this video and if you're not subscribing to my channel, please do so you don't miss any of my videos and I hope I will see you in the next one. Bye!